Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is September 18th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I think it's good to go over how at present, how human caused climate change impacts the intensity and the damage caused by hurricanes. And I'm gonna go ahead and use this graphic provided by Climate Central to talk about three of the aspects that human caused climate change influences and alters when it comes to hurricanes. But I'm also gonna add a, another factor that is not in this graphic. So I, I just want you to listen and, and, and pay attention to, to all four factors. So, so the first factor is, I'm, I'm gonna do this in reverse, is a higher storm surge due to rising sea levels. The second factor is heavier rain due to higher levels of atmospheric moisture loading due to a warmer atf atmosphere. And the third factor is warmer ocean temperatures equal more fuel that increase the potential peak intensity of hurricanes. And the final factor is alterations to the jet stream, which allows storms to stall over areas for a longer period of time. So, so numerous factors with regards to human-caused climate change that make hurricanes more intense and increase the likelihood of intense extreme hurricane events. So drilling down, We'd just like to note that globally, sea levels have been rising since the dawn of the 20th century, with the rate of sea level rise accelerating to the present decadal rate of around 3.3 millimeters per year on a global basis. It's worth noting that certain regions like the US East Coast are seeing rates of sea level rise that are faster due to factors such as land subsidence, or alterations in ocean currents, such as a slowing Gulf Stream. So we are seeing increased impacts already from storm surge flooding due to sea level rise that basically provides a higher ramp for storm surges, for storms that do run into shore when they run into shore. And in the event of Hurricane Sandy, for example, it was found, according to this research provided by Andrew Friedman and, and others, uh, according to geoscientists at Rutgers, for example, that the impacts of Hurricane Sandy storm surge were increased by 27 square miles due to the rising ocean levels along the East Coast alone. So sea level rise increases storm surge impacts. It's also worth noting that we have had some record storm surges as a result of the recent impact by Hurricane Florence in North Carolina. Those rec records would not have been broken without rising sea levels as a platform, as a higher platform upon which the storm surge could ride in on. So rising sea levels increase the impact of storm surge. The second impact is that a warmer atmosphere holds more water vapor. And for each one degree Fahrenheit increase in global temperature, you end up with a 4% increase in average atmospheric water vapor. This increases a much, well, this greatly increases the available moisture for heavy precipitation events. And at present, the Earth is warmed by approximately 1 to 1.2 degrees Celsius above 1880s averages. And converting Fahrenheit to Celsius, that results in about a 7 to 8% increase in atmospheric water vapor fuel for storms. And we are seeing more intense rainfall events across the world as a result. Hurricanes are, are big rainstorms, and this warmer air, this, this higher moisture loading, does provide for more fuel for extreme rainfall during hurricanes, in particular, hourly rainfall rates. 
And we're going to talk a little bit about storm duration, which also impacts rainfall, to, rainfall totals, but the increased water vapor alone increases a, the potential for higher hourly rates of rainfall. Just to, just to, to provide a, a bit more of a caveat here, I'd just like to note that the, this warmer air and increasing evaporation, increasing precipitation, it increases the intensity of events at both ends of the hydrological spectrum. So lands dry out faster, but rain falls harder. So just, just a caveat for you. Now, I'd also like to talk about hurricane intensity. Now, the primary fuel for hurricane intensity is warm ocean water, which increases the rate of evaporation from seawater, which provides a convective impulse into the atmosphere. And, and this is the primary impulse for developing hurricanes. The warmer the ocean surface, the, str the stronger the potential storm. And I'm just going to go ahead and read this quote from the journal Scientist Science in, in an article that was posted on Real Climate. This uh, science journal article was published in 2016 and notes, we thus expect tropical cyclone intensities to increase with warming, both on average and at the high end of the scale, so that the strongest future storms will ex exceed the strength of any in the past. So as the sea, sea surface temperature increases, the limits that storms can reach increase as well on the top end of the intensity scale. And what this means is that we can see storms of a category that we have never seen before in the modern age which back in 2016 caused Dr. Jeff Masters and others to ask the question, do we need to add a category six to the hurricane intensity scale? Now a category six storm is a storm with maximum sustained winds of 200 miles per hour or above. And already there's evidence that the earth atmosphere at this time can produce such a storm. And even before human-caused climate change, it's likely that these kinds of storms were possible, but maybe as one in 1,000 year type events, one in, one, one, one in 500 year, one in 1,000 year type events. Now we don't need to really talk too much about how human-caused climate change is increasing the frequency of previous one in 1,000 and one in 500 year events as we have seen with rainfall, because we've seen these one in 1,000 year rainfall events occur quite frequently over recent years. We haven't quite seen the same effect when it comes to hurricanes, but what we have seen is a greatly increased frequency, a 400% increased frequency of category five hurricanes, which are the present top of the scale. So one wonders what changes have occurred for the potential for a, a theoretical category six frequency to occur. And the only such event that we really have a record for potentially was a very severe hurricane that struck the Lesser Antilles back in 1780, which had estimated maximum sustained winds of around 200 miles per hour. We've had no such event in the modern age, but as ocean surface temperatures rise, the potential for storms like category six storms increases and we are likely to see them occur more often. So a little scary there. Now, don't have much time left. So the last thing I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna move through rather quick. Last influence is jet stream changes, which if blocking patterns emerge, storms persist stronger over certain areas. We saw this with Florence, we saw this with Harvey and scientists like Dr. Michael Mann are indicating that the potential for longer lasting storms over specific areas is also increasing. So a number of factors that increase damage and intensity of hurricanes, both in wind and in rainfall. Thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.